Right now I'm controlling my telescope which is thousand miles away from here in the Atacama Desert. Actually it's not, it's just a YouTube video here. Hello everyone, in today's video I'm gonna share with you everything I've learned about the remote astronomy in the past two months, namely what is remote astronomy, what types of remote astronomy exist, and uh, what was my personal experience with it so far. I would say that remote astronomy is when you basically don't have a physical access to the telescope. Or to get that physical access will require traveling significant amount of time or substantial distance. And although a lot of things became remote due to the pandemic, Remote astronomy actually existed for a pretty long time already, due to the very nature of astronomy. Namely, that in order to get best results, you have to have your telescope under the darkest skies possible. And usually the place with the darkest sky is not the same place where you live and make money in order to fund this pretty expensive hobby. That's why the idea to have your telescope somewhere on the top of the mountain in Atacama Desert while you're controlling it in your comfortable chair at home emerged naturally. But the next problem to solve is where exactly to put your own telescope. Imagine you have a piece of land somewhere far from the light pollution. Yes, you can build a little observatory there, but then you will have to solve all kinds of issues with powering it and uh, having an internet access. And it's nice if someone you actually know lives nearby to look after your observatory. Because an equipment which can be fully automated usually costs a lot of money and uh, you want to make sure it's secure. That's why smart people came up with an idea of a telescope hosting. It means that you can rent a space for your telescope in the fully dedicated to astronomy facility. This space can be in the form of pier in the large room with a bunch of other telescopes or it can even be your personal space where only your telescope is. Anyway, they provide a stable electricity and internet connection and of course absence of a light pollution. Besides, the whole area is usually secured and all of your equipment can be protected with an insurance. And they also have staff that can provide an assistance in case you need to solve some technical issues which require physical presence. But it doesn't mean that you can ask those people, for example, to cover your telescope with a lid or flat panel so you can take a calibration frames. Everything should be automated. Basically you need to feel almost like those engineers at NASA which send rover to the Mars. That's why make sure you can do everything with your setup by just sending commands over the internet. It means that not only the mount should be controlled remotely but basically everything. Focuser, filter wheel, power, telescope leads, rooftop, it should also have clouds and rain detection and the whole thing should be very reliable and well tested. Sounds like a lot of work, right? Not only work, but also a lot of money. That's why other smart people came up with another idea. Telescope as a service. In this case, you're not worrying about equipment, infrastructure, any technical aspect. You just need to book a time when you want to use it and pay for it. So now doing remote astronomy became almost as easy as ordering stuff from Amazon. You just need to choose a telescope, time slot and enter the coordinates of the target you wish to shoot. Actually sometimes you can just use its name or catalog identifier like M42. Then you specify the exposure time and the number of exposures. And if the camera is monochrome, you can also choose the filter to shoot with. The greatest thing about it is that you can plan your session long time ahead and you don't need to be awake during the imaging session actually. When your images are ready, you will receive an email with a notification. And until that, you can completely forget about it. Those services also provide a set of calibration frames for each telescope. So you are not paying for the time taking them. Just download them when your images are ready. Another big advantage is that you don't need to buy your own equipment. The setup I'm using remotely costs more than $20,000 and my real-life setup costs no more than $1,500. And to be honest, it makes a whole lot of difference, especially under the darkest skies of Atacama Desert. Because in my opinion, the problem with your own setup, especially when you don't have your own backyard and you always have to go far away outside the city to find the darker sky to shoot, is that sometimes there are no clear skies for months or even more and the rig you've spent several thousand dollars on is just collecting dust in the storage. While with a rented telescope I'm only paying for the time when the sky is good. Now about my own experience. 
I've chosen the service called Chiliscope, mainly because they are the only ones who have a wide field astrograph I was interested in. Besides, in my opinion, they have more affordable prices and uh, also I've been following that project since its inception several years ago. Because the founders actually are well-known Russian amateur astronomers and they posted all of their progress of building this service from the ground up on the astroforum.ru. So far I've managed to take two images on that service. First of them is a monochrome image of the Barnard Loop region in H-alpha. It's a three-panel mosaic which required overall three hours of long 10 minutes exposures and half an hour of short 60 seconds exposures for the M42 core to create an HDR image. I've spent around $60 for the telescope time. And I've decided to make it starless using Starnet++ plugin, as this way we can really enjoy all those gas clouds. Second image is of the Betelgeuse star and SH2-264 emission nebula. This time I wanted to get a color image. That's why I've collected at around 45 minutes of 300 seconds long exposures for each of the LRGB channels and also 6 of 10 minutes exposures in H-alpha a couple of days later, which makes it 4 hours of the total exposure and also around $50. I've been really struggling with the post-processing of this image, and uh, even though I have this book, combining LRGB data and then narrowband H-alpha data was completely new to me. And there are so many small stars and faint details that just don't play out well together. So I've made already 5 editions and will keep trying. The positive side is that I've learned a lot already during the process, so it definitely paid out. So what's my impression about remote astrophotography? I found that it's not that simple as it might sound to you. Unfortunately, remoteness doesn't save us from the moon, which means that even though you still can rent the telescope during the full moon, there will be a high chance of getting bad results due to the gradients or moonlight pollution. But yes, you can still go narrowband and choose the target far from the moon. Though if you want reliably good results, you will need to choose the time when moon is not up at all. Another negative point is that due to the limited amount of remote telescopes available and high demand, the best time slots can turn out to be already booked by someone else months in advance. And besides, rent prices are the highest during the new moon and decrease gradually towards the full moon. So if you want to save some money, it can become a challenge to feed the desired target into available time slots, making sure that the moon is not above the horizon during that time. Even though the observatory is placed on the mountain and uh, the Atacama Desert itself is really famous for having clear skies almost the whole year, clouds can appear right on the day you've scheduled your session. And guess what, even if the next day the forecast is good, there's no way you can reschedule it because it's fully booked already. Yes, those telescopes are fully automated, except one thing which most of us are actually used to use during our imaging sessions. I'm talking about an ability to rotate the camera. My guess is that automated field rotators are just very expensive and can also introduce one more failure point to the whole setup so observatories just don't bother installing them. But it means that you lose many opportunities to frame the object the way you want to. Another issue with the framing, at least at the beginning, is to actually make sure what's gonna get into the frame. Even though on their website they publish all the sensors parameters, I found that in reality the field of view is usually a bit different. So you either need to inspect other images taken on those telescopes and hope they are not cropped, or to give it a test shot to figure it out yourself. This particular service, Chiliscope, is sometimes really hard to use due to the slow data exchange or bad user interface. For example, it can take up to several seconds to load available time slots without any indication of it's loading something, or you can accidentally close the pop-up with the session planning form and have to fill it all up again. Then your session can be just cancelled for seemingly no reason 
and uh, the logs won't tell you anything. And downloading of the final images can be also very slow. At the beginning I was pissed and uh, thought of all those things as very negative. But to be honest, now I started to appreciate all those difficulties of using this kind of remote telescopes. It sometimes even feels like using a physical setup in the sense that there's some fighting with the software and a very high degree of uncertainty. Some people say about the images taken on the remote observatories. These do not feel like my images. Do not feel like my images. Frankly speaking, I had the same thought before I started, but after going through some difficulties and failures of getting images there, now I feel much stronger that those images are truly mine. So now I think it's a matter of the effort you put into this. Because if somebody offers you some bullshit like one-click astro image with guaranteed results, no surprise it doesn't feel like yours. Another way to look at it is from the money perspective. Because remote astronomy is really far from being cheap hobby. Each decent result means that there's most likely a decent amount of money behind it which also means that you've already put an effort in earning them and you are using this money in exchange for the high quality data which belongs only to you. What I also did in order to feel more of an ownership and uh, authenticity is I tried to choose the framing I haven't seen before or plan a mosaic in order to increase the complexity. And so far I've only shot targets seen from my northern hemisphere. But there is not a lot of them, so I believe soon I will start exploring all the richness of the southern hemisphere as well. Remote astrophotography is a great way to practice and improve your post-processing, which I think is the most important skill in our hobby. Anyway, I encourage all of you to go and try remote astronomy and decide for yourself. It can become a great addition to your main astronomy hobby.